Okay, so my name is Gary Marcelino Pirono, and I'm currently the CEO of Saga Retail Group. And I'm coincidentally also a third generation of a family business. So in the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will share some insights and of course experiences that we as a retail group face during the pandemic. Uh, what were the mindset at the time and what were the things that we implement? And of course, what are the strategies moving forward in the new normal era? Okay, so a little bit of my company background. So we Saga Retail Group, we are based in Jayapura, Papua. It's the east most of Indonesia. And we had a three divisions. We have supermarkets, department store, and bakery and cafe. As you can see from the picture, it's our bakery and cafe and some of our branches. And we have been happily serving our customer since 1985. And well, we're planning to keep doing so. So our vision is to become the best and the biggest retail group in Papua is Indonesia. And our mission is simply to serve our customer better every day. So as you know, in 2019, late 2019, we had COVID. And during 2022, we had crisis, global crisis, even in Indonesia. In 2021, we're thinking, okay, maybe we can get through this, but not really. So it's still a path toward recovery. And thanks God, in 2022, we can, we can, I can say that we are back in action. As you can see from the chart, uh, during the, quarter, uh, the first quarter of 2022, we actually went back to the, to the uh, pre-COVID uh, uh, quarter growth of 5%. So I think macro level as, uh, in Indonesia, we're doing okay. As for our own performance, uh, in the first, uh, in 2021, we had a growth of 9.59%. And according to Nielsen, Indonesia had a growth of about 9.4%. But if you're considering that the modern trade actually consists, which consists of, you know, hypermart, supermart, and mini market, they only did growth of 3%. So we actually had a growth of three times of the industry average. And during our first quarter of 2022, we actually had a growth of almost 15%. And during the eighth festival, during the Ramadan, we actually did about 35% uh, on April. So yeah, I think we're doing okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. So again, during the pandemic in 2019-2020, the local government, the central government, they, Im they implement a lot of curfews and restrictions to all of us. Uh, so in Jayapura itself, because of the travel lockdown, we couldn't get in or get out of Jayapura travel. We cannot do that for five to six months. And we had to close down our, super, our supermarket or business operation at 12 noon. So imagine we only given like four to five hours window to actually operate our business and to serve our customer. And there's a lot of paranoia happening in Jayapura at the time because you know 80% of the goods are actually coming from Jawa. So people are afraid that there's gonna be a shortage of food, there's gonna be scarcity. So, you know, at that point it was quite bleak. But me and my top, top management, we didn't panic at the time. We thought it true. And we decided that we're gonna focus on our core values which is affordable price, fast assortment of items, and of course, good old customer service. <coughs> and we realized two things at a time. So first of all, it's not about the lack of demand because you know people at the time are panic buying, uh, but there's a constraint on operation hours, like I mentioned earlier. So at 12 noon, everything has to be shut down. Oh, it's even worse. At 12 noon, everybody has to be at home. So at 11.30, we have to close down all of our operations, which are, you know, challenging. And number two, yeah, they did panic buying, but the question is where? Where will they do their grocery shopping? That's the most important question. So we had this mindset uh, because we're in grocery business. So it's going to be business as usual that we are not in survival mode, that we will expand while others shrank or other contract. 
And second, we will focus on our customers. So the question at the time was, how can we serve our customer not only better, but safer and more convenient? So these are some of the strategies that we implement during the COVID-19 uh, crisis. So first of all, we didn't do any layoff or furlough on all of our employees, because the logic is if we do that, we couldn't serve our customer as good as we was. We also maintain our SKUs, our product assortment. Why? Because people are panic buying. They don't have much time to like go to two or three or four supermarkets. They just want to go to one place that has the one-stop shopping solution. So that's why it's imperative for us at the time to maintain our SKUs. And of course, we maintain the buffer stock of our fast moving product, staple items like, uh, like as you can see, it's an instant noodle, a cooking oil, condiment. We make sure it's, uh, it's there in the shelf because again, when people are panic buying, they're actually hoarding stuff more. So like frozen food, uh, cooking oil, uh, Indomie, they, they bought a lot at the time. So our revenue surprisingly actually increased during the first two months of the pandemic. But of course, their shopping time actually decreased by half because people want to grab as quickly as possible and go home as quickly as possible. We also didn't do any price gouging policy like uh, maybe some retailers do. So we maintain everything in normal price, even on high demand items like uh, hand sanitizers, yes, even eggs at one point in uh, Jayapura, a mask, uh, toilet tissue, to, uh, uh, tissue um, toilet paper. Uh, we maintain everything normal price because again, we don't want to trade off uh, the short profitability only to you know lose the trust of our customers. We also did a lot of home delivery for this giving sense of convenience, give more options give you know, more choices to all of our customers. Uh, at one point, home delivery actually consists about 5% of our total revenues in daily revenues. And we, and we did a lot of online marketing campaign and we focus on three things. First is the promotion, second education, and third is the information. For example, we did vaccination for all of our employees and yeah, the first and the second uh, vaccination, and then we post it in our social media, we make it viral. We also did a lot of education on COVID health protocol, washing your hands, you know, wearing mask, um, don't go anywhere that you shouldn't. And of course, we, uh, we actually, uh, it's a mandatory for all of our customers to wash their hands when they're entering our premises. So we did this education on health protocol and we put it online on our social media. We also did a lot of routine sterilization almost every day during the height of the pandemic. So it conveyed the sense of hygiene and cleanliness so that customer feels safe when they're entering our uh, supermarkets. And we also did a lot of collaboration with strategic partner like, uh, like you can see from the example, it's uh, with Unilever and with uh, Bank Mandiri. So with suppliers and bank, we did join promotions because like I said, the mindset is that we're in business as usual. So that's some of the highlights of the strategy that we implement during the COVID crisis. Now, what are the strategies moving forward? Again, we'll stay true to our vision and mission, which is to serve our customer better, you know, to become the best and the biggest retail group in Papua, Indonesia Timur. And we're also gonna stay true to our core values, which is affordable price, which is fast assortment of items, which is of course, good customer service. We'll focus on those two. And with that two in mind, these are some of the strategies that we are currently or planning to implement in the next future. But for the sake of time, and because I think I just gonna focus and highlight three most important uh, strategies that have significant impact to our retail uh, uh, retail business. So first of all would be a new store expansion. So the more we open stores, the more we can grab the market share, we can generate more revenues, as simple as that. And number two, we'll continue to expand our SKUs or product assortment 
but we will be more selective, you would say, because we'll focus on the high margin categories like you know um, non-food area and then fresh fruit, fresh produce and frozen food. Because again, if you focus on high margin um, category or items, of course your profitability, your net income will be slightly higher. And as you know, in retail business, especially in supermarket, grocery supermarket business, we have a single digit um, profit. So an increase of one or 2% are welcome. Uh, last but not least, the third one is our profit sharing policy. We had done this even before COVID. So we share 5% of our net profit to all of our employees. So it gave a sense of you know, ownership toward the branches or toward the, the company. So whatever they do, whether it's negative or positive, will be have an impact directly or indirectly to the performance and thus, of course, the incentive that they receive. Okay, so the summary, I have two points. First of all, you have to follow your customer because that's the key. In the end of the day, that's all business about. If you don't follow your customer, don't stay in business. <laughs> and number two, retail is all about experience. So we have to do what we can to do. We have to do what we have to do to actually make our store or retail experience more attractive to our customer. So the key is to actually pull them into your store, not begging them to come to your store. And yeah, that's all for the presentation, but I would like to close with a quote that I think perfectly summarize uh, the ongoing business situation that we're currently facing. And I think it's gonna be more relevant as we will go to the future. So it's not about the big eating the small, it's actually about the fast eating the slow. Thank you.